Oh, my God, my headlamp just blew up on my head. Well, that looks really uncomfortable. You found stashed. I'm Pat, firefighter, mechanical engineer, and battery guy. Oh my God. Look at this. It just blew up again. While this situation was bad, it could have been significantly worse. What was it like having a battery fail on the back of your head? It felt like I got punched in the back of the head when it first blew. And I reached up and blew, threw it off my head and burnt the hell out of my hands. Oh, my, this, the first finger is the worst. Can't really see it. That finger got cooked too. Oh. Those are some pretty nasty burns. Hopefully he got some medical attention and, and in the hands too. That's, that's a little rough. Unfortunately, the batteries weren't done with him yet. Oh, oh this hurts. One thing to consider, breathing all that smoke and stuff coming off the batteries, it's not really a great thing, having that exposure. Now, it is a small amount, considering considering the room size, everything else, and it'll probably cause some congestion and just him not feeling well the following day. We'll come back to Headlamp Guy, but before we do... No, nothing. What? Deborah's going all nutty on me over here, but what else is new? Bob, I got a problem. It's big, and only you can solve it. Let me know in the comments, does this guy sound more like Ray or Teddy? And why are we talking about this failure? Because when it comes to lithium-ion batteries, failures aren't always over after the first sign of trouble. And that's something that we need to think about, especially in the fire service. We're seeing more and more battery-operated devices on our trucks and on us personally. Take a look at this right here. This is a stream light. It's a helmet light, and it's pretty popular. Inside, it's actually just an 18650 lithium ion battery, but it's got a little modification. It might be hard to tell, but it's got a, a little charging port built in, and you can see the difference in size there. Not a lot of difference, just a little additional length to it. It's actually pretty neat, but what I find a bit odd, not surprising, these batteries come with a warning not to heat them above 140 degrees Fahrenheit, 60 degrees Celsius. A battery that goes into a light that most firefighters have on their helmet. Probably the hottest place when we're inside a structure fire. Think about the design standards for fire helmets. Most of our helmets are expected to survive 250 degrees Fahrenheit with no issues at all. NFPA 1971 states they must survive 350 degrees Fahrenheit, but they've got to survive that for five minutes without significant damage. That's almost twice the safe limit for those batteries. Now, to be clear, I'm not calling out Streamlight. This is just raising awareness. If one of these batteries fail while we're fighting fires, will it hurt us? Likely no, but I'm sure it'll make things a bit more exciting. At a minimum, if you're doing flashover training or any high heat evolutions, just take your helmet light off. It's as simple as that. A really easy step to make sure our flashlights don't go into thermal runaway at a really bad time. As for the guy with the headlamp, hopefully he recovers from those birds quickly. I am thankful I had this thing on, even though I got hurt. Because if that wasn't on my head and I wasn't home, it would have burnt my house down. It absolutely would have burnt my house down for sure. I can't believe that. Holy shit. 